Welcome. I've had a number of people asking me to do a quick tutorial, if you will, on the Tronc CX-1 part cooling. I haven't really messed with the Tronc CX-1 for quite a while. I've been pretty absorbed into the CR-10 and mostly the uh, Prusa i3 Mark III, but I thought it would be kind of fun to pull it off the shelf, give it a shot, and uh, see what I can do. So stick around and uh, see how to put on a part cooling fan. And we'll see you on the other side. I'm Ron and this is my place. <laughs> Welcome back. And I think we're ready to get going. What I think we're going to do is I'm going to try and show you a few things of the pieces, parts that you're going to require to do the actual upgrade on the Tronxy. Probably looks, looks familiar. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about fans. We're going to talk about some wires, connectors, pens, um, things of that nature. And then we'll get into the things like the control board and the wiring, etc. Um, the big goal, just so everybody's aware, is you can see this blue piece right here. We want to get this that's providing part cooling to the nozzle as it's, you know, really to the, the part below the nozzle if we do things right and then wire this fan into the control board, which is inside your Tronxy. You, bu you built up the thing, so you should be uh, familiar with it. Now, as a caveat, I did want to point out is I'm actually using a different control board now. I've uh, changed over to a Ramps 1.4, um, mainly because I am really used to Marlin, and all my other printers are Marlin-based, so I ended up trans transitioning just because I could I don't know so I did and we basically everything else is the same except for we plug it into the board because the board will just be configured um, the Tronxy board is actually pre-configured to already accept the part cooling fan so it makes it really really nice anyway so let's get started uh, let's talk fans if you'll notice I've got a bunch of fans that I pulled out of a box here, and we have a, a bunch of different sizes. Uh, they go from 60, which are a lot of times like part cooling fan, or uh, excuse me, like uh, power supply fans in, in a CR-10, uh, moves quite a bit of air. This is a 50, a 40 by 20, 40 by 10, and then a 30 millimeter. In, the, in, the, in each of the uh, model numbers, they usually will tell you exactly what size they are. Uh, and uh, most of them are 10, which is this width here. Um, and then you notice this is a 20, which is uh, twice what a 10 is. Um, so usually, the, like this is a 60, 60, 15, M214. Um, and it's 15, you can subtitle it down, but you get the point. It's 15 by almost 60. This one's a little off. It's 59 point something, whatever. And then this is a unlabeled one, but you can trust me when I tell you it's a 50, and it's 50 by 10. So that's how the, the naming scheme goes. So if I end up, I'm going to put a link down in the description down there somewhere. Um, on some parts to buy, but you don't necessarily have to buy what it is that I am linking. So it's better to just kind of learn what all the different parts mean and then buy whatever works for you the best. Okay, so we talked about fans. What we're specifically going to deal with, though, is you want to have the right size fan for the job. Uh, this is a 4020. It moves a lot of air, but it is really noisy. Um, and this part cooling fan didn't really need a ton but depending on what part cooling piece you decide to go with you're going to want to have a different sizes um, a lot of them are, are done for 40s um, usually 40 tens which is this one uh, the, the lot of them here on the the Tronxy, i saw a number of them were the 30s uh, i haven't had any problems with it i thought it worked perfectly fine so um that's the one i went with so that's what I'm going to recommend you go with. 
So the point here now is there's the next step after you decide what fan you're going to use and what, what kind of shroud you're going to use is what kind of connectors. A lot of these connectors come, they'll either come bare wires or they'll have different types. I'm trying to see if I have another one with, they'll have usually this type of connector on the end. These connectors don't often match up to the motherboard um, or the main control board, sorry. So you, you're probably gonna have to use pins. Now I've used a bunch of different styles and if you look on the control board, interestingly enough, you can see the kind of connectors they are. And this plugs right in. The problem is that we need this connector, this very short connector to go all the way to there. So your options really are going to be either repinning it or you cut the wire somewhere in the middle here and then you will add in some wire that you buy and solder it in place. Um, it really is going to be dependent on what you get. You're not going to find one for a part cooling fan. You're not going to find something with long enough wires to get all the way down to your control board. But most of the ones that you're going to be looking at will come with the right connector. And then all you need to do is get some wire to extend it out. But you're going to also need to get some solder. Um, soldering is really easy. It's simple. I'm not going to cover it here because I don't want to be responsible for you all hurting yourselves if you have issues. Um, but there's a billion different videos out there on how to solder. It's really, really simple. Soldering irons are really, really cheap. I'll try and put one down, a link to one down in the description as well. Um, and when you're soldering, it's really simple. You're literally just taking two of the same color wire and you're heating them up and putting a little bit of molten solder on them to hold the connection. The only thing you want to make sure of when you do that is that you use something like this which is called heat shrink and it's simply a tube that you'll cut that will basically go over the top of the solder connection and then you can use heat from the heat gun either a heat gun or the heat from the solder don't touch it it'll melt it but if you get it close it'll actually melt it down um, and I'll try and link I'll link this as well um, so you can this is probably way more than you a lot of you'll ever use but you'll get the idea and you can buy whatever it is that works the best for you um, the other options that you can do is if you make connections and basically repin things and you can use pin kits um, such as this from uh, Hilitichi, Hilitchi, whatever it is called. Um, there's, they're Amazon, they're all over the place. Again, I'll put some links. And it's kind of neat because they have all the pins, male and female. Uh, different types of connectors and then they even identify in here uh, what the crimper that you need for it so you, it, it, it works pretty easy it's it's simple uh, but again you can just get yourself uh, an extension and wire you know solder in kind of a jumper if you will um, so anyway so there you go you've got some uh, connector choices uh, you also have ones that are used quite often on like Arduinos and different types, um, which are this little tiny um, type of connectors like this. Uh, you can use these as well. And again, the kits come with pens and even some jumpers and everything that you could use uh, for this. So these are actually really, really, uh, really useful, but at times, Th things like I have them set for one of my fans and uh, it works it's not a it's not a locking type of a connection it's more just a push onto a pin um, so friction fit so hopefully I didn't ramble too much for you there um, you've got the 30 millimeter fan depending on which <laughs> which camera we want to deal with so 30 millimeter fan 
wires to jumper. And a soldering iron. That's all you need. Of course, some solder as well. All right, so what we're going to do now is break the video and I'm going to clean up some of the stuff and I will be right back. Okay, we're all cleaned up and my OCD is taken care of. Uh, what we're trying to do here is, as you can probably see, this fan, which is similar to this one, is attached by four little fan screws into a 3D printed part. Inside here, it's held on by two screws. So I'm just going to... So these little screws, you want to be careful because when you printed this, it's that whole riprap community. You're literally printing a part for your printer with your printer. And if you don't think that's cool, then you need another hobby. Because that's cool. Now, inside here, you can see there's a couple screws. There's already holes threaded into your shrouding here for the hot end. So this is going to screw right in. And I recommend using a couple little washers. And it will put this right onto there. So this is just the ductwork that is designed to take the fan and put it at an angle down to the hot end. Now the, the trick here is that you want to make sure your fan is blowing in. You don't want it blowing out this way. You want it to go into the duct and out by the part for cooling fan. So don't go the other way where you're going to cause all sorts of problems. So now I'm going to put this thing back together again. Again, I'm being I'm using just some little little screws that I've got from a bunch of kits. Um, you, unfortunately, I'll leave you on your own on that one. Um, I ex I recommend if a lot of your little screws sometimes to come with these fans is, aren't going to be long enough. Um, so I just used a little um, machine screw and. They seem to work really well. Um, just be really delicate. There's no force really needed to hold this, so you just get it on there and it sits just fine. Um, all right, so the idea is, so now that's there and we have this wire. Well, you can see I actually have a connector. Come on, big boy. I have a connector that I've created from the kit so I can just, I put it in here and it allows me to do a wrap because what you want to make sure of is that the wires don't get in these bearing wheels. Because if they get into the wheels there, that's bad news. So I just kind of wrap it this side and then it snaps right in. So it'll be perfect. Another thing you want to watch out for is hot end is called hot end for a reason because it's hot and it melts plastic so keep your fingers away if it's still hot and keep wires well away um, everything kind of from here up should be fine um, this all up here should be nice and cold if it's not you got other problems so then you're just going to take wire splicing in however you need to and you're going to run wire following your Bowden tube here all the way down into this main your main bundle and you're going to want to basically re rewrap all your wires i highly recommend getting it all working first then you can worry about cable management at the end and you're going to run this wire along this cable route right into your control box we're almost done so you're going to have your control box i'm going to switch camera views here so your control box is going to be like this. Obviously, it's going to be looking something along those lines. You, you ball put it together, you should have no problems. Take it apart as far as you need to. And what you're going to see is a bunch of these connectors down here. Um, I'm going to put a 
picture that's going to label it as well but they're all silk screened right on here especially if you remove the front control panel you'll be able to see it and the one that's C fan is the one that should already be connected one right next to it is called fan that fan is the one that will be directly connecting to your hot end fan the one we just installed and all you got to do is get it plugged into that and once you have that plugged into there all you got to do is put it all together and do a test. And when you do a test, the easiest way is to, you'll be able to go actually into your control software and on the, actually the, on the Tronxy itself, and you'll be able to go into the controls and tell the fan to come on. Because keep in mind that this fan is on all the time. This is putting heat in or cooling into your hot end. Um, the extruder itself and that's keeping it the hot parts hot and the cold parts cold Which is what allows it to work. This fan is not on all the time This fan is literally controlled by how you set it in your slicer So you're gonna have it set usually at a pretty small, you know 25% on the first handful of layers and then you're gonna kick it up to maybe 50 and then up to 75 or 100 depending on your cooling needs um, and you're gonna set that all in your slicer um, I'll do a uh, example and maybe I'll pull up a slicer here right now and I will show you a couple of spots where you're going to program that in. So what we have here is I'm actually utilizing um, Simplify 3D. Uh, it's going to be similar if you're in Cura or Slick 3R or yada 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 yada. They're all very very similar. You're really what you're looking for is a section called cooling and when you find the cooling section, you're going to see fans. Now, ironically, you're going to probably find that most of your system, it could already be set up. You, you may already have com commands being sent out to, to a fan that just hasn't existed before. Um, but now that you're hooked up to it, this, is, this section is what's going to actually control everything. So you can see here that I have no cooling fan for the first layer. Uh, and the point behind that is that you want to make sure it goes down really, really well and sticks to your your main bed and then after i hit section uh layer two i kick it in halfway 50 percent and then i go to th uh, 75 and then 100. Um, this happens to be for the cr10 on this one um, but it, that's all there is to it that's all you have to do and as soon as that's part of your your profile um, when you slice a part it's going to automatically do it so that's all there is that's all there is to it and the next step will be doing some uh, manual testing okay so this is a little bit weird but um, keep in mind my controls not hooked up so I went ahead and wired power to it real quick so I can show you um, how to get to the test feature and I have a uh, fan down here wired in exactly the same place you should have it wired in and this is your when you boot up it's really hard to get a good picture so you can see the fan you can see the controls so the first thing you want to do if you're trying to test it is open up your mem uh, menu system and then you're gonna go down on this first screen and you'll see fan speed you hit the right button I'm doing this backwards so if I hit the wrong one forgive me and you can go down to say 50% and then you hit the right button again and as you can see the fan will come on to 50% uh, of course you can go down further and go all the way to 100% as it walks across the desk and then you can go back up tell the fan to turn off again with the right button and your test is complete Okay, I lost my audio, um, so I'm going to kind of do a little voiceover here. What I was trying to point out was that you have red and a black. Red is positive, black is negative, and there's actually silk screening on the board right by the connector. Make sure that when you put your connector in that the red is on the positive, the plus, and the black is on the negative, or the minus. Um, that's super important, and some of these connectors, like this one here, was actually wired backwards, so the only way to do that is either pull the pins and swap the connector around or pull the piece out 
like you see me struggling to do here and I get a little screwdriver you got to be careful not to damage anything and it's a little plastic shell that will pop right out so you can use that or just change the connectors around that's pretty much it hopefully you've uh, learned something and you've got an operating part cooling fan and at this point there's not a lot else to do so if you have any questions or problems uh, leave a comment below and I will do my best to help thanks for stopping by and print everything you can.